Um, today I'm going to show you how to use the Hitachi 40 800 scanning electron microscope. Um, after you log in, this program will automatically load it, and we don't have password here. You just click OK, and then the program will be loaded. We want to set the sample holder with the sample uh, underneath this standard height. Um, this is the highest you want to go, um, otherwise your sample will hit the opening uh, of the low lock door. Um, we have uh, different kind of sample holder, uh, up to 6 inch. This is a uh, sample holder for 6, six inch sample. And uh, this is a uh, 2 inch sample holder. We also have some sample holder that allow you can look at the sample at an angle. Um, finally, um, Today we are going to just look at uh, the small sample. Uh, this is two AFM tip on here. And as I said before, you need to adjust the height to um, such that the sample holder with the sample underneath this surface. The way that we mount our sample to our sample holder is using this black tape here. Um, this is a uh, special double side tape uh, with the um, made of carbon. Um, it's very important to have the tape being conductive because this is a scanning electron microscope. Uh, electron is going to uh, uh, go to the sample. If you don't have a conductive path for the electron to dissipate, your sample will charge up and you will deflect the electron and then the scanning electron microscope will not be able to, uh, to work. So we have a row of common tape here. Uh, cut a small uh, piece of the common tape, tape it on the sample holder and then you put your sample on there. So that means if you have a very thick sample, uh, in order to have the sample holder fit inside this surface, you lose it, lock, and then when you turn it clock, um, the height will go down. If you try to lower the sample holder too much, the bottom will stick out. If the sample is wobbling like this, that means it's sticking out. Even if it sticks out a tiny bit less than a millimeter, it's going to be a problem. So you loosen this set screw and then um, you turn it back up. If I turn it counterclockwise. If I do that, it's very stable because it doesn't stick out. If you have a very thick sample, we have some shorter posts and uh, you can special request to have those shorter posts for your thicker sample. So to, to load the sample, we press the air. That's to when the low lock uh, to atmospheric pressure. The air button will continue to flash until it reach atmospheric pressure. Uh, you will stop flashing and then you will hear the beep sound. So that beep sound indicates uh, the low lock is now in atmospheric pressure. You can open the low lock door. When you open the door, we don't open the door by this handle. Because if you do that, you will bend the exchange rod and you will create a leak. When you open the door, you want to open the door with two hands. Now, once you open the door, we will push the roll lock, uh, the exchange rod in. And you can see two points in here, which will go into these two holes. So that's how we mount our sample holder. Zoom in, you will see um, there is a thing that turn and lock the sample holder. Now you cannot take it out. When you handle the exchange rod, you don't want to handle the metal part here. We put vacuum grease on here. If everybody touch the exchange rod, the vacuum grease will be gone and then it will become very stiff to move it in and out. So always handle the exchange rod with the black handle. So after we load the sample holder, we will pull pull it all the way back out. Make sure you pull it all the way back out. I'm going to show you if you don't pull it all the way back out, what will happen. So I don't pull it all the way back out right now. And then next step is to close the door. And then we will start the evacuate. When we press the evacuate, because we didn't pull it all the way out, the vacuum will suck the exchange rod in. So I'm going to show you. Now I'm press the evacuate. And then you can see the exchange rod is getting sucked in by itself. You don't want it to happen. If your sample is uh, larger than your sample holder, your sample is going to crash to the low lock door. So 
make sure you pull it all the way out. Usually it takes a few seconds to pump down and when the pressure is low enough in the low lock, this evacuation button will stop flashing and you will hear the beep sound. So the next step is to press open. When it's pressed open, it takes a while to actually open the door. It's trying to check the pressure. And once again, you wait until this stop flashing, you hear the beep sound, then you will know the low lock door is open. We are ready to load the sample. Right now, um, the sample holder is locked. This is in the lock position. Once, it, once we push it in, we will go to the unlock position and then the sample holder will lift behind inside the chamber and clamp down by the stage. And then after we unlock, we will pull the extractor out. When the sample holder is fully engaged onto the stage, you should see half of the sample holder on this monitor. If you forget to check the height of your sample, your sample is taller than the opening, you are not going to hit it if you look at the window here, instead of looking at the monitor, because the monitor only shows you the end point at the stage, Looking through the window, you can see everything. So after we load the sample, we pull the exchange rod out. Make sure you pull it all the way out. If you don't pull it all the way out, like this, the vacuum will suck itself in. And then when you try to close the gate valve, if your exchange rod is not all the way out, you won't let it happen. So you have to wait until you pull pull it all the way out, and then the gate valve close. And that's to protect um, ha you from having the exchange rod in the middle of the gate valve and try to close it. It will damage both the gate valve and the exchange rod. The rest of the uh, operation is basically through the computer software. So the software will protect you from doing something damaging. The last thing you need to let the software know is go to the stage button and click set, it will allow us to set the um, sample holder size and the height. Uh, remember the standard height we have. Um, if you adjust the height such that it's near that standard height, that is the standard height. And if it's higher, um, the maximum allowed it will be three millimeter higher than that bottom surface of the standard height. Otherwise, it won't go through the door. It won't go through the opening. Uh, but we we set it as standard height, we will choose a standard height. And then the size, that is the diameter of your sample uh, plus your sample holder. The one we put in is a one centimeter sample holder. And since the sample doesn't extend beyond the sample holder, we will choose the uh, 10 millimeter one. The software need to know the size of your sample holder in order to tell you what kind of the tilt angle is allowed it. You can imagine a one centimeter sample holder will be allowed it to tilt more without hitting uh, the objective. But if you put in a six inch wafer holder and you didn't set the sample holder size correctly and the software will not know, you will think this is a one centimeter. And then it's going to allow you to tilt more than you should and you can hit something. So make sure when you set the sample holder size, you set it to larger or equal to the actual size you put in. I'm going to click the home position. Uh, we are still at the exchange position as indicated by the green indicator. That's where we load and unload the sample. So home position on the other hand is where uh, the objective lens is. Uh, we will move the, I'm going to click home position and you will see the stage is moving and your sample holder will be right below the objective lens. So once it's at the home position, then you can turn on the high voltage. To turn on the high voltage, uh, we can select the high voltage by clicking on this icon here. The maximum high voltage is 30 kV, and the lowest, uh, we usually, the lowest it will go is 0.5 kV, but usually we will only go down to 1 kV. Once again, high voltage, high accelerating voltage gives you better signal to noise ratio because it has more electron, but the scattering volume is higher, so the resolution won't be as good. So that's why most people will choose between 15 and 10 kV. So we are going to use 15 kV today. 
and the emission current is the same. Um, higher emission current gives you better to signal noise ratio, signal to noise ratio. Lower emission current gives you a better resolution. But then you might need to use longer integration time to get the same signal to noise ratio. So most people will use 10 microamp or 7 microamp. After we choose the accelerating voltage and the emission current, we will kick on and then you will turn on the high voltage. At this time, the software will try to remind you one more time, um, you have chosen sample size and standard height. If this is correct, you just click OK and then the high voltage will come on. The first thing we do is go to this high-low magnification button. Uh, this is to toggle between high magnification and low magnification. So I'm going to toggle to the low magnification. That is going to allow you to zoom out more and find your device. So show here are two AFM tip. At the end, that's the uh, AFM cantilever. So I'm going to zoom in. Uh, to zoom in, we use this magnification button. We're still in the low magnification setting. LM means low magnification. So once we zoom in, we will use this focus. So this is the magnification button. This is the cross focus and fine focus. So I'm going to use the fine focus. Once we find the area that we want to look at, we will go to high magnification. When I click here, this LM will disappear. And we go to the high magnification mode. So why now, you, because we look at it head on, you can't really see the tip. So I'm going to do the uh, tilt to let you have a better look. So I go to the stage. I will kick the tilt priority. So I'm going to set at 45 degree and and hit go, it will go to the 45 degree. And you will actually automatically adjust the height based on the sample holder size to satisfy the 45 degree. If you set the sample holder size correct and you see it's about to hit something, this is the emergency stop. So this allows you to stop it if you see you are going to hit something. There are two priority here. One is C priority, one is T priority. C priority means fix the height to the current height. And you can see the maximum we can till with a 15 millimeter sample holder is only uh, 31 degree. So we can, if we want to go to, for example, 45 degree, we have to choose the till priority. Till priority means it will automatically adjust the C and try to satisfy the till angle. So if you need high angle, you need to set the till priority. And then you set the 45 degree. And hit go. And you can see it will automatically try to uh, first lower the sample holder. Um, and in the, at this point, it lowered to 12. And you calculate at 12 millimeter it will give us enough room to tilt to 45 degree angle. But if you set the sample holder size correctly, the software should take care of everything. This is the emergency stop button. Um, if you set the sample holder size incorrectly and you see uh, it's about to hit something, you can click here, then it will stop. To adjust the focus, sometimes you can choose the reduce one what it does is um, it scans a smaller area but increase the integration time. Because when you adjust the focus, you want to have fast response. But at the same time, uh, increase the integration time, scan a small area, will give you a shorter response time, update the image faster, allow you to focus it better. So after you finish adjust the focus, you kick the TV one, and then we go back to the full screen mode. The high mag and low mag has different um, focus. So even you, after you focus in the low mag, when you go to high mag, you still need to focus it. You get a uh, pretty good focus. And you are ready to take picture. Um, you can kick ABC. ABC is automatic brightness contrast control. If you don't like it, you can uh, adjust the brightness and contrast yourself. To capture the image, uh, we will do a slow scan to increase the integration time, and that will reduce the signal-to-noise ratio.
This image capture allows you to capture three different resolution. Usually, people will choose the medium resolution, uh, but if you want to do some publication, you can go to the highest resolution to give you the publication quality image. And also, after you capture the image, you can do some uh, measurement. You select the picture, click the PCI. That's another software allow you to measure the dimension of the uh, sample. So this PCI software, you can select the measuring tool that will allow you to measure the width of the cantilever. Select the first by left, hold on to it, drag to the final point, and then release it and then we OK. And you can also measure the length. You can also measure uh, how sharp your tip is and uh, do the quantitative uh, measurement on your image. In the SCM system, we have two detectors. One is upper detector. The other is lower detector. When the working distance here is less than 12 millimeter, we want to use the upper detector because that means your sample is high, it's closer to the upper detector. When the working distance is larger than 12 millimeter, it will look better with the lower detector because that's, then your sample is closer to the lower detector. Here is a good demonstration. Right now, we are at 10 millimeter working distance. If we use the lower detector, you can see the image a lot bring than we use the upper detector or we can use the mix detector. It's basically uh, the mix detector will automatically adjust how much signal they got from the upper detector and lower detector. Usually, we would like to use the mix detector. The shutdown procedure is to turn off the high voltage, so you kick off. Right after you kick off, the program actually freeze for a few seconds. So you need to wait five seconds, and then you are going to move to the exchange position. So we will click the EXC button. You click exchange to the exchange position. When the stage is very close to the exchange position, it will appear it's already stopped. It's because it's trying to park to the exchange position. At the end, it moves very slowly. We don't want you to go by the monitor to tell whether the stage is at exchange position. We want you to look at the computer. You want to wait until this is stopped flashing before you try to unload the sample. So we just do the reverse order. We first press the open to open the gate valve. So once again, you will try to check the pressure, make sure everything is OK. Um, if the low lock pressure is not good enough, you will try to pump. Uh, and then once the pressure is OK, it will open and indicate by the stop flashing and beep sound. Once it's open, um, Right now, this is at unlock position. That's where it was after we load our sample. So we keep it at unlock position. We push it in, and then we lock it. After we lock it, uh, because now the stage came down the sample holder, you will need some force to pull it out. So, uh, but, so we are going to pull it out. And you can see that now the sample is not in the stage anymore. And once again, you put it all the way out. Uh, make sure it won't get sucked in. So you put it all the way out. And then you press the close button. And after it closed the gate valve, then you can run the low lock. So you run the low lock so you can retrieve your sample. So I press the air to run the low lock. And when you stop flashing, you hear the, butt, uh, the beep sound, then you can open the low lock door. And we open it with two hands, push it in a little bit, go to unlock position, grab the sample holder, pull it all the way back out, and Make sure you pump it back down. You don't want to leave the low lock in air uh, overnight. And then you can uh, take your sample off uh, the carbon tape and put it back to your sample holder. So I just show you how to use the Hitachi S4800 uh, scanning electron microscope um, to uh, inspect the sample. Um, 
including loading the sample, uh, adjust the focus to get good image, and then uh, use the software to measure the dimension of your sample. And finally, show you how to shut down and unload the sample.